Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, there's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And go on when I got like bed bugs and some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pure fuckers out there. Anyway, October Red, I'm here with the future star of the light heavyweight division, Ben the Surgeon Whitaker. Welcome back, Ben. No, thanks for having me, man. Just finished my last little session. You got to see it yourself, and I'm excited. Going into fight, this is fight number five, or is this yet? Yeah, I can't believe how quickly the time flow. I thought you've had about seven fights. The journey so far, turning over pro from the Olympic medalist to now somebody that everybody's talking about. How have you found it so far? Yeah, it's good. They're talking for the good things, bad things, but at the end of the day, the goal remains the same. You know, I've got, I'll continue to work hard, keep my head switched on, and it's just part of the game, really. As long as they're talking, that's all that matters. Performances and showmanship, that is something that comes naturally to you. I've, I've been there, I've watched you spar. Some of the showboating that you was doing, it's almost instinctive. It's natural. It's not even like you're pulling it on. Talk to us about that Ben Whitaker style. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, even going back to my amateur days with GB, we used to do this thing called video analysis, sit down, watch the opponent. And all the coaches used to say to me is, please today, try not to showboat. But it was just my uh, my style. It's a, it's a It's a way to frustrate your opponent, walk them onto different shots. So some people get it if they know boxing, some people don't. But I think I'll just keep that until the day I'm done, really. I think it'll work for me. One for outfits. We know that you're sponsored by Adidas. I'm not jealous. <laughs> but the outfits, the walkouts is something that, along with the fighting, that we look forward to. You bring the show business to boxing. Oh, don't tell us what it is, but... Give us a hint on what we can expect from you on Saturday. Yeah, of course. Uh, when I was an uh, amateur boxer, I just wanted to go pro, truthfully, to make my own kit, the ring walks, things like that. At the end of the day, you've still got to get the job done. You've got to go in there and get the world titles and whatnot. But part of it for me was the show business side. I didn't get in the amateurs. And uh, yeah, I've got something uh, exciting for Sunday. I'm excited to show it off with the kit as well. And uh, it, it's just a way to pay back the bands as well. They pay the hard-earned money. And it's something for them to watch as well as the fight. You know, that transition, like you said, with the amateur style, it was, you've got that showmanship in you anyway. Apart from the pay, obviously there's more eyes on the sport. What would you say that you found the differences between amateurs and pros so far? Um, little gloves. Um, you have to build your own team where when you're on the GB team, you're kind of given everything. You're a bit muddy coddled, if I, if I call it that. You had the physio on standby, you had the coaches on standby, nutritionists on standby, where everything now comes out your own pocket. You have to find the right people. You do get some people that talk a bit of rubbish. Oh, I can do this, do that. You bring them on, they don't know what they're doing. So it's just finding the right people, putting the right people in the right places. And um, at the end of the day, if you don't put it in, you get found out in the ring. So and that's why you got to make sure you cut no corners. Finding that right team, then what is it that makes someone, except for obviously backing their talk, doing what they say they can do, it's still got to be a fit for you. Personality clash, you say, for example. What does Ben Whitaker, what do you look for in your team members? Um, really, my team's pretty much family anyway. Of course, I've got like the Adidasis and stuff like that, but my actual internal team is just family. It's my dad, Joel Buse, my godfather, my strength conditioning coach and nutritionist is my brother. Uh, and then like the people around me are like my best friends from year seven, things like that. So for me, the smaller, more loyal lo loyal people around me is the bait on people just coming in and left and right because you don't really know their agenda and for me it's the same people that i started with i want to finish with so for me it just makes that journey much more better do you think as you push through the professional ranks you start to collect belts because obviously that's what you're here for do you think it's going to be difficult to sift those people off because and i'll say this say for example our, our name drop say anthony joshua there was a time when he seemed like he had a smaller team, but then as his fame grew, he seems like he had like 5,000 people walking around with him. How do you think you can then make sure you keep that core team and keep that there and be careful of the hangers-on? I suppose sometimes you can't really help it even. Like, apart from my, um, my showboat and star, arrogant, whatever you want to call it, um, my actual personality away from that's real quiet. I'm very like sometimes awkward. I don't like to speak and things like that. So when people do come around, I sometimes don't know how to say no. 
Uh, but the good thing is that's why I've got my dad. I've got people around me so they can talk for me. So I think that's why I've got the people around me to do that for me. But if people want to tag along, they can kind of tag along if they want. But I know deep down in the back of my mind, they won't be there. So it's one of those. You keep them there at arm's length. It's interesting that you say that because like you said, when we see you in the ring, you are this ball of light. I've watched your social media. You are a showman naturally. But it's funny that the ones that are most talented, usually off camera, they're the most introverted. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't know what it is when the lights come on the cameras. If that's my home, it's my job, and I love it. I feel comfortable. But when the when everything's off, I just become normal. Ben, you know, what I mean, just the Ben that likes to just chill out with his family, plays PlayStation, eat a bit of rubbish now and again, little things like that. But I'm still a kid at heart. But my whole life's been prepared for this boxing, so I know when the lights come on, I'm comfortable. It's like a kid doing his sats, that's just me jumping in the ring. The stuff that you've got coming out, we've seen like the t-shirts, you know, I know you're a massive... See, you guys call it anime, I always called it manga. I know that was a... But it's like you're a massive fan for that. We see the tattoos and it's almost like that business mindset with you is already there. The idea around bringing that kind of anime to life, that's Are it. You it with yourself? Yeah, that's it. Um, well, first, I did try and do all the Dragon Ball Z stuff, but I didn't want to get copyrighted. Because ah. <laughs> so uh, I thought, you know what? Let's go one better and do my own uh, little character. So it kind of made sense. But at the end of the day, it's just ways to connect with my fans, friends, family, uh, give a bit of part of myself to them. And some people liked it, to be fair. It's quite good. And not only that, it's quite weird seeing like young little kids walk around with your T-shirts on. It's really nice. So um, hopefully I've got some more designs coming and things like that. The thing that I can say is definitely one of the things I like about you is you've got a business mindset. I remember speaking to you just before your first pro fight. Our first interview. Oh, see? <laughs> first interview. Won't be the last. But you've always had this business mindset. Where does that come from and why do you have it? Why is it so important in boxing? It's a bit of a weird one because... If you ask me like a normal maths equation or to read this, do that, I'm dumb as anything, honestly. But I just think people excel and are creative in different ways. And for me, it's just at school, I was selling Kit Kats. I was always making money. I was always doing something with money. So I'm a bit clever. If I've got £10, I want to make £30. If I want to make 30 60 And I think at the end of the day, boxing's boxing. You've got to go in there and fight and win titles. But your own brand, your own identity is a business as well. And if you can market it right, do the things right, you can make a living that way too. So a lot of buyers out there just want to box, but at the end of the day, you've got to talk, you've got to sell, you've got to do a lot of things to not get forgotten about. One of the things I will say, touching on that, is your social media is A1. Sometimes you look forward to looking at people's profiles because what's going to be on there, you've got your own little re reels with the, you know, the Ben sign in there. So it's all branded. The idea to literally, and I've said it before, you're doing more promo than the promo. Yeah, That's one thing i got to shout out my brother, to be fair, because okay. I actually hated posting. I, in a way where I'd be like, people might think it's annoying keep posting, do you know what I mean? I used to be like, someone's, this person follows me, this person follows me. They don't want to keep seeing my annoying face, but my brother said, forget that, man. you got to think about yourself. So what we did is, it was crazy. I was on like 50K, 60K. My brother said, keep poaching each day at this time, blah, blah, we'll brand it, we'll do this. Within the space of four weeks, I was on 110K. And, you know, I was like, well, it's working. And then ever since then, we've just been going, going, going. I'm on 200K now. So i got to shout out my brother on that one because if it was me, I'd still have no pulse on there. <laughs> so that family support, that core support, I mean, I've seen you there training with your brother. The idea, sometimes they can see things that you can't. You've got your dad there to maybe keep people at arm's length. You've got your brother there on the social media. That tight-knit crew, how important is it to keep them there and for them to follow you through your career? Yeah, it's really good. Um, like I said, bite week. Um, just having those people around you that can keep you calm, keep you good energy. And they're the ones that, at the end of the day, you do it for as well. They're the ones that you're trying to change their lives. So to see them all go through that journey with her, it's a good story. I'd love my mum to be there, bless her, but she's the rock who stays at home. She don't like fighting and stuff like that. She just likes my ring walks and that's it. But um, she she shows love in a different way. She like mother cuddles me, make sure my food's ready and things like that. So everyone does the right jobs for me, so it's good. One thing I want to touch on is what advice then would you give to, you know, other fighters 
new fighters, fresh fighters. Like I said, I've even put you ahead in the amount of fights that you've had. To take on this sort of like, it's not just boxing anymore, it's the entertainment business. Yeah, it is. And like I said, you don't have to be the most flamboyant. You don't have to talk out a term because I am starting to see a lot. Some people are talking and doing things. It's not really their, it's not really their image. You don't really sit right with them. But find what works for you. Find the, the people you can click with. And at the end of the day, these have got to talk for you. So you can do all that. You can post all that. But if you're not performing right, do you know what I mean? So you just got to marry everything together, the performance, the media, your team, your image. And when you start clicking all that together, you start going up. 12 months, we like to do a forecast, never looking past your opponent. It's not about that. But when we look at a roadmap, we look at, okay, we've got targets to get to. When you look at 12 months down the line, you see the likes of Dan Aziz, Joshua Boatsy, Lyndon Arthur, Dimitri Bivol, Arta Beterbiev, all of these fighters that are out there. Where do you see yourself in and amongst those guys? Skill-wise, definitely there now. But experience-wise, of course, I'm a, a bit, I'm chasing them in experience-wise. So, of course, all I need to do for the next child months is keep getting that momentum, keep getting that experience because everything's an experience in the pro game. So walking to the ring, different arenas, different people coming to check your hands, it's all a different thing. But uh, the one good thing is I'm still 26. Some of them guys are 35, 38, things like that. So for me, a title of some sort next year and getting to some decent fights with uh, some, some hype behind it will be good. The decent fights, you guys at the moment are getting pressure to be in more 50-50 fights. But you as a businessman as well as a boxer, it's important to build the fighters. Like you said, you, when it comes to skill level, you're happy that you're there with them. However, it's the experience. So how important is it to keep building before you start jumping the gun and going after, one for a better word, the big boys? Yeah, that's the thing. And I think that that's the only thing with the light heavyweight division. There's no in-between, oh. if I'm honest. It's like, yeah. there's, a there's a bottom where like prospects like myself are fighting some of the bottom guys and we kind of get in backlash. Oh, you should be fighting this. You should be fighting him. So, all right, then you want me to fight a bit more next to my sick fight? It's like, it's, it's not realistic. And then there's no middle ground. It's either, like I said, bottom guys or Bivol, Baturbia, them type of people. So that's the only thing with this weight division. But it's a good thing to be. You're in a part of a division that's exciting. You can, you can be moved fast if you feel right. So for me, it's just... Like I said, whatever my team puts in front of me, it makes sense. Let's do it. And looking at your career with Boxer, how you've been managed, how you've been promoted, the number of fights that you've had, how is it going for you? Is the pro game all that you dream that it would be? Not really. Uh, <laughs> not really. There's all contracts, there's this, that, there's yeah. lawyer talks, there's a lot of nonsense. But at the end of the day, the boxing's the boxing and the boxing isn't really different to what I thought. It's just a lot more talking to people you don't really want to talk to. There's a lot more smiling and nodding to the people you don't really want it to. But at the end of the day, things are going really smooth. I like the way it's going. From my end, it's been a bit frustrating with the little niggles and setbacks, but I'd rather have that now than later on in my career. And I'm learning to just listen to my body a little bit more. But right. at the end of the day, the top elite level athletes, if you're pushing yourself, you are going to get these things. So I'd rather push myself and get injured than not. So that's it. And your opponents, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name because I will get it wrong. Your opponents, what do you know about him? And when, when you have a plan, do you have a plan? What is... The Ben Whitaker style, are you an instinctive fighter? Because I never really know with you, because you're just going, it, to me, it's like you're going in there, you're sussing them out and you think, okay, and then you just start pinging shots off. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, that's very good, actually. I've got like three styles in a sense. I can be very, like, what is it, instinctive. Yeah. Said. yeah, I can be like that, like, in a sense where I can just go in and I do things off the fly. I can just do things off the bounce type of thing, which is very good because you can adapt quickly. There you go. But we do sometimes, well, not sometimes, we always do it. My dad looks over the opponent and kind of plans me out a very simple A, B, C or a one, two, three plan. The kid will do this. If he does this, do this. If he doesn't do this, he'll do this. And then, then there'll be like three. If he does this, you do this. And type, like that, it's very dumb. Very simple, but it works. And then, of course, if those things don't pan up, then you have to kind of think on the fly. And then not only that, you have to make them fight your fight. It's all good and well. Oh, he does this, he does this. At the end of the day, they're thinking about that to me. So um, it's good to know their strengths and weaknesses, but I met them fight to me. And at the end of the day, 
there's not many light heavies with my speed, my height, my skills and speed and things like that. So if anything, they've got to fight my game. And when they try and figure me out, I can do something else. When they try and figure that out, I'll do something else. So it's all good. It's not that, but well, we've seen it before when people have tried to make it their fight, but yeah. it's ended up the other way around. How do you pull that person to make sure it's your fight, to make sure that you're in control? I'll give you an example. Katie Taylor and Chantal Cameron. I always said Chantal Cameron was able to make it her fight, control it. But then we saw Katie Taylor come in and completely yeah. dismantle that and totally own the fight. So how do you do that when somebody's coming with that same kind of plan? That's the thing. It's, um, I think that's what a good fighter is, being able to conquer all things. And I, I heard it the other day, Barry Jones was talking about some fighters getting a pattern of a fight where it was a Callum French for someone else and it was like a very messy fight. And the pattern of the fight for the whole rounds was messy. All that Callum French needed to do was start boxing, but because he was stuck in that pattern, it was very hard. But I think a sign of a good fighter is knowing that, okay, that round didn't work. Let me try something different. Oh, right. That round didn't work. Let me try something different. Oh, that worked. Let's keep that. If he tries something different, we'll switch it again. And I think, or not only if he susses it, sometimes switch it anyway. So they never get they never get the sus of what's going on. And I think that's a sign of a good fighter. Always switching it, always making the ball in their court. Never wait for them to change. So listen, we're looking forward to seeing you back out. I'm gonna keep this brief on. So listen, for the viewers, Ben as Lich, this is kind of like the eleventh hour. This is his fight week and he's been training, albeit he says it's light, it wasn't, <laughs> Not compared to us. You've been training to like the 11th hour. Tomorrow, I take it you go down to Bournemouth. So listen, we wish you all the best for fight night. Get the W and I'm going to come and film you on them mad crazy hills. Yeah, yeah, I've told you we're going to give us some exclusive content, come and train, the, uh, come and record the camp and uh, show what a real fighter does. You know, I mean, none of this fancy Instagram stuff, some real work. <laughs> We love it. Listen, Ben Whitaker, all the best and thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Make sure you check out October Red. People say I'm toxic and honestly, I don't care. <laughs>